Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about AWS Glue. What is the purpose? Why we are using the AWS Glue? While using that in AWS Glue, what are the services needed? And many more. So let's start. The AWS Glue is the serverless, first of all. And uh, if you know about what is the serverless, uh, it's fine or while using that in these services just we are paying for whatever execution time it is going to take it we are not going to manage that in a server it's a fully managed by that in AWS it's a cloud optimized and it's used for extract transform and load the data and in short form we used to say ETL service the glue architectures it will be look something like that that so it will be right uh, you'll be have a data catalog or we can say that in a kind of a placeholder where everything will be configured then from AWS management console will be accessed that in a data catalog and data is stored it will be stored about that in a data followed by that in a schedulers will be there, there which will be allow us to schedule that in a jobs when you want to execute on demand daily or like in Monday Tuesday and so and so forth and we can set that in a weekly and monthly as well then we have a jobs so the jobs can be a number of that and for a specific purpose for example here you can see we have a data we are extracting it and then we are doing the transformations so in the transformations we used to change that in a column name drop the duplicate split it or duplicate that in record and in part of a transformations that in a scripts will be also generated in PySpark or other escapes and third one we have has a load so it, it will be again load the data in that in a target system right so this is a high level architectures we have then when should we use that in a glue let's say use case a data warehouse to organize clean validate and perform the data in form of a transform the data and move it into the data store load the data from the source into the data warehouse for regular reporting and analysis purpose that is another case when should we use the glue running a serverless query against the amazon s3 data lake third one we have when should we use event driven ETL pipeline run the ETL job as a new data becomes available in Amazon S3 by invoking AWS glue ETL jobs from AWS lambda functions or a step functions in my upcoming video or next video I'll be uh, integrate with a AWS glue with a, a step functions so I'll share that link also you can watch it then we have registered a new data source in AWS Glue data catalog and consider it a part of ATL job. These are the options as a part of a Glue demo. We can do it. Let's say create a data source for the AWS Glue. Crawl that in a data source data by that in using the Glue crawlers. Crawl the metadata for the Glue tables and query data with help of a Athena. Around 80% of a data analysis is, is, is spent in that in a data preparation stage only. And glue is going to help it out for all those, right? Then we have a data preparations. It's a time consuming activity. Multi-step process to extract, clean, normalize and load the data at a scale. Must integrate the right tools for that in a right portions. Then we have a data preparations, expensive, costly user license and 
silo tools that cause the tin rewards often require moving the large amount of a data into silo at the time of a outside the VPC. Then we have a data preparations. It's a manual, difficult to operate and build a repeatable workflow, needs a lot of a code base, a heavy lifting to work at a scale. Then we are going to do that in a demo. So it's a demo time. So before that in a demo, what, what we need to do, we need a AWS account with service access like identity and access management, at least for creating a role, because we have to create a service role. Then we have AWS S3 full access is required for one for input data bucket and another for output data buckets. An AWS glue full access and Athena full access is needed. Followed by that, we are going to refer that in a CSV file for let's say employee and department and we'll do the associations. So let's uh, see that in a input and output file first. So here you can see I have a department and employee.csv and I'm opening that in a both file. In employee, you can see I have a employee ID, e name, department ID and age. Employee ID, it is a starting from 5001 to 505 and department ID is mapped with a 101 to 105 and here is one of the wrong uh, department is map. Now we have in department 100, 100 and up to 500, uh, 105 is there and you can see department ID name created by and all few of the field we are going to modify it at the part of a data transformations. So now I'm going to that in AWS console and I have already logged into it. So the next step is I'll search that in a identity and access management and create that in a IAM role, right? So a IAM, that is a first activity you have to do. I'm going to create a role. So I'll select that in a roles and click on the create. I'll choose that in AWS service role, which will be used for glue. So I'll type that in a glue. And here the glue is selected. I'll click on the next and I'll choose that in a administrator access for that, meaning I need a full access. I can choose that in a AWS glue full access as well, but let it be administrator. Next a role, I'll say that in let's say uh, YouTube demo okay AWS glue role right YouTube demo AWS glue role and I'll come all the way down and you can see we have a full permissions I'll click on the create so a step number one is done next I'm going to choose that in a service called s3 bucket and I'll create that in a two bucket, one for input data, another one for the output data. So here, so in why we are using the S3 bucket? Because we need to upload that in our CSV file there or uh, as input and our output will be generated in the output folder. It is a object storage. Uh, if you want to know more about S3 bucket, please watch my other video where I have explained the S3 bucket. Okay. I'm clicking that in S3 and then it's a general purpose. I'll type that in a name. Let's say how input in put. Okay. Data for YouTube demo AWS glue. Okay, I'll keep it something like that. And uh, because here we are going to upload that in a file, so I let it be that in a private, let's say, because we don't want to access that in a public. If required, then we'll change it. So the input data got created, bucket. Now I'm going to create a output folder, uh, folder or bucket. And here I'll put that in a input, so I'll say that in a output data for YouTube glue and I let it be as it is. Okay, create a bucket. 
so all in all we got that in a two bucket one for input another one for the output okay so in and out both is there which is for you to one is for this one and another one for this uh, these options I'll, I'll duplicate this one I'll let it be as it is now I'll be go to the uh, so a step number one and a step number two is done I'll open that in a glue now these are the prerequisites it is required right so this is that in AWS glue uh, a screen so where you will be get that in a getting started and all so I'm going to the home screen and you can see by definitions AWS glue it's a serverless data integration tools uh, or services it's a move the data set to the newly any size and pre prepare them for analytics and machines learning AWS glue has a data integration tools for every skill set and manage all the infrastructures you can click on the getting started or you can come all the way down and in here in data catalog you can see we have a crawlers so I'm going to choose that in a click on the crawlers and click on the crawlers I'll choose that in a YouTube demo AWS glue okay and uh, I'll say that in a learning glue in YouTube video learning glue by YouTube video in easy easy steps then next uh, it is asking do you have any data source and or you want so if you have then you can choose but we don't have uh, at the moment so we are going to choose the not yet and we are going to add a data source so now for the data source our source locations will be there as a s3 bucket so i let it be data source as a s3 you can choose that in other also right it is supported multiple data source right you can choose that in a table and all in our case i'm choosing the s3 and here we have a s3 bucket if you remember so we have created that in a data source this is the input data and then choose right and then I scroll all the way down and you can see here it is saying crawl all subfolders because folder inside folder also if any file is there then it will be take it or crawl new subfolder or you can choose it we can also choose the sample only subset of file and exclude that in a matching pattern but it is okay uh, add that in a file uh, a data source and now you can see the data source got added at the same time you can add that in another data source as well so it support the more than one then we can choose that in a classifier what classifier you want okay but this is the optional part so I'm going to let it be classifier is nothing but what type of a file you are looking for or formats okay so it's to support that in a uh, uh, CSV Joshans and Parquet and few more Evora then next step it's asking to choose that in identity and access management right so here you can see this is that in a roles we have created YouTube demo uh, glue role and I'm selecting if you will not create that in at the beginning state here we have a options you can also create it but it's nice to have before then that is fine then in security configurations and data lake we have a optionals right I'll click on that in a uh, next okay and then we have a database so at the moment we don't have any database so I'm going to add a database now it will be asked that in a name of the database so I'll say YouTube demo okay AWS glue DB okay and locations and all I'll keep it like in you know, a optional click on the create and as soon as this database is created in this screens in we have to just refresh and you will be see that in a database got created which will be also appear in that in a here so we'll see that in bit later uh, if you want to prefix that in anything in table name you can add it which will be prefix it let's say I'll put that in a YouTube demo 
okay so it will be added in that in my employee and department table and then it's asking how the crawlers you want to schedule you want to on the on demand hourly daily weekly monthly and custom so you can choose that in a basis of that as of now i'm going to keep it on demand whenever it is required i'll click on it and run then next and here you can see we got that in a and uh, all configure i'll do that in a create a crawlers so it's got created and uh, uh, it is there now i'll be go to that in a visual etl right this is not required so i'm closing so in visual etl uh, you can see uh, uh, we don't have at the moment we need to look into that and uh, here you can see the crawlers is already created right we can choose it right and we have the options to run that in a crawlers or we can edit it right so let's say etl jobs visual etl right so this part will do that in a next video uh, how will that in a visually we are going to see so what i'll do in crawlers only and you can see that in a database got created right and we have a uh, crawlers now with help of this we have any actions we can edit delete duplicate and view the details or we can run it so i'm going to run that in a crawlers okay but before that we need to uh, make sure your crawlers is having some visual connections right so uh, let's say it etl okay visual etl uh, then we have a visual etl i'll choose that in a data source here we have a three options let's say i'll say that in youtube demo aws glue right that is nothing but a uh, 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 or jobs like a name then we have a plus button while doing the plus button the source star uh, transform target and popular we have so in source system we have a amazon s3 if you remember right so here we'll select it what is that in a source so we have s3 locations we'll choose that in s3 locations what is the source we have but as of now in s3 locations you can see we have not uploaded so input data for this one will upload that in a employee and department file so upload button and add a files okay and files is there in that in a AWS glue here both file I'll select and upload it okay right so uh, first one I'm going to create it for that in a employee so I'll select here and then I'll choose that in a input data and I'll choose that in a employee and then choose now it is asking what is the format you have so it's a format is the csv file and it is we are using that in a semicolon in that in our file if you remember right and double quota and all and now you can see it's a green green symbol and in that in im role it is asking so i'll put that in a whatever role is created which is the youtube for the glue roles and as soon as you will be do that in a save here you can see that in a data is populating from the employee table okay employee csv file okay and it will be created that in a schema for that yeah this video is going to be long uh, for but that's fine in one video if you want then it will be definitely take a longer time okay So it's a reading that in a CSV file and creating the tables and loading that in a data in the tables, which is there in the preview state. You can see around 60% uh, completed. Okay.
so it will be take a few seconds more we'll wait for that then it's loading the data in preview mode And here we go. So you can see now employee ID, e name, DID, and age. All data is displaying in the table or format. You can see that in a what is that in a tables is going to be created. So now we got that in a success. Our data is loaded in that in a glue. We can also create that in a uh, let's say transformations. So here we have a transformations. I can choose that in a change a schema. And in change schema, I can put that in OK, EID to EMP ID. And now you can see as a part of a transformation, so now we have a EMP, EMP ID and EMP name. OK. And uh, in that in a, this output, if I click, now in that in a schema, you can see here EMP ID and EMP name. We can also change that in a data type. If not required, we can drop it as well. Uh, but it is always nice to have that in a, another process. For example, let's say I want to drop that in a field. So here we have a drop field and we can attach it. This drop field to choose that in which node you want. So I'll choose that in a uh, change a schema as a source. And then we want to drop the field as a age, right? So in this process, what it will be happen? You can see in drop field now, EID, ENAME and DID only there, uh, uh, age got a drop. So altogether we have a three process. First we load the data, employee data. Then we change that in a EID to or ENAME to employee, e EMP name, EMP ID. Then we drop the field. Similar way we can, do, I'll just click on the save because it's giving that in error message or warning, which is okay. Now, similar way, I'm going to load that in a department also. So data source all the way up and S3 bucket. And in S3 bucket, we have a, right? Uh, I'll choose that in a bucket for input data again. Okay. And inside I have, we have a department, right? So again, I'll choose that in a format as a CSV file and then uh, semicolon, okay? And now you can see the data got formatted and we are able to display that in a data and see here in department ID name and so and so forth. The department, uh, we got that in and we can also change that in a name. We'll say the DEP, uh, DEP, A-R-T-M-E-N-T as departments. Okay, here we can say that in a hey, this is that in a employees. Okay, E M P L O Y E L E S employees, right? So now we got the department employees. We want to join that in this employee to the department. So what we need to do now? We need a transform. And you can see here we have a change schema, SQL, and many more are options we have. We'll choose the join. And what joins we want? The joins got created. Okay, so once we'll choose that in a transform as a join. So join is coming. Okay, join two time I have clicked it. One of them I'll delete it. So for deleting, we have a options call. This is the options we have to choose. Now this join is there, but to where we are going to join. So we'll select the join and we'll say that in EMP to DEP, GOINS joins. And we'll choose the parent. The parent we have a employee, right? And then the uh, second one will be have a child one will be have a department, right? So both I'll selected. And now you can see 
the employee and department we have selected and which type of a join we want it's a inner join outer join and also let's say inner join and we'll add the conditions in employee table we have a uh, department ID and in department we have a DEP ID so we are matching and now we can see that in with help of a employee and department it's got joined right and if you'll select that in a employee department join and here is the output we have right so we are getting that in all fields but if you want to customize and keep it in certain fields then again you can select that in a, this joins okay and uh, uh, click on that in again and in transform you can say that in a drop field because some of the fields you don't want so we used to say drop fields and we can say that in a uh, T R A N S F O R M E M P right transform employee and, and department and we had let's say this field we don't want so we are we want to create it by department ID is also not required right because employee had modify you on let's say also not required so we can select it now you can see here only we have a selected field instead of a department id and having that in a form n number of so what we have employee name employee id department name and created one created one also you can delete it let's say if you don't want just we have to select over here and the created one also got removed now we have employee ID name and department which is fine now so now we need a final one which is output so I'll select that in a last one and in target system we are going to choose that in a third one as a target so we need a Amazon S3 bucket you can choose the other source as well and here you can see we are in that in a third one so we can say EMP DP final output okay and we'll choose that in a transformations is okay now we'll choose that in a format as a csv okay compressions type none and then we'll choose that in a bucket locations as a output okay so in output bucket locations here we have options do not update the data code log or we can choose it generally we choose first one or second and if i'll go here in this time you will not get that output because this target doesn't support right we need to save the jobs and run it okay so once this job is saved then i'll run it right so before going to run we'll see that in each and every steps we have a code an automatic PySpark code is generated right so we'll see that in a code or a script sections you can see here we have a code we have editor also we can unlock it so it's using the PySpark and you can see each and every steps we have a set of a code and this is that in a final output we have where that in a it's going to be employee you can see transfer employee to department these are the columns got dropped okay and uh th this department and employee this is the join statement we have and many more so you can just walk through that in a code now i'm going to again in visual editor and click on the run so the job has started running and we can watch it from uh, here just click on the job run uh, monitoring if everything is fine then in output folder we'll see that in a, our data okay so we'll see here um, i'll be close this one and i'll go to that in a output folder okay so let it be we'll see what is the happening for that in a job still it is loading uh, due to the network speed it may be taking a longer time yeah so you can see youtube jobs is a still in running one and previous job whatever i have run some of them it success and fail so we'll wait for that until unless it's getting success
yeah so jobs got success now i'll be going to the output folder and here we have a output folder so what we need to do we need to make a bit a smaller size with text which will be visible and you can see we have to just click on the size icon and we'll see which one we have a bigger one okay We have a 43 as well, so I'll just scroll all the way down. Right, so this is the file we need to open it, okay? So before that, we need to go to the permissions and change the permissions as a, right? We need a read write access for that because we're not able to download. So what I'll do output folder, we need to make a public one. Okay, which is okay. So in this for folder, I'll be go to the permissions and change the permissions as a allow to public because I want to download that file and uh, save the change. I'll confirm and uh, I'll allow that in a ACL policy as well. ACL enabled and then I'll say I acknowledge it which is okay. And then now in ACL sections, we'll be have edit options, list and read. I'll just choose it, everyone. I'll confirm again and save. Now I'll go to that in inside the files uh, and all the way down, you can see 43, okay. I'll click on that in arrange by that in a name and 43, this is the file we have. If I click on that in, let's say, download it's again access is required sorry so change the permissions if you have ac ec2 server and all and configured then it is easy to read but we are trying to do via the gui then this is a step we need to do okay now we can see the one file got downloaded we'll open we go we got that in a employee id and it's a selected that in a data our one data is matching okay and it's a displaying right department name employee id and all we got that in a job so if you want then you can go to the again visual editor open that in a youtube one and see why the data is not coming and coming all if you will select it the all it will become in that in a final okay so here we can see how many records we are getting after that in a deleting that in a data and only these are the data we are getting which is getting generated in that in a our table as well okay so that in needed in that in a table okay so this is what we have um, okay so uh, thanks for watching my video. Please like, share and don't forget to subscribe it.